Hey folks, Matt Klinskowski here, and I've got a really fun tutorial for you today. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. We're essentially gonna take this photo, which is kind of blah, and, uh, and we're gonna turn it into this, and we're gonna have some fun while we do it. There's a lot of neat, I, I, I guess artistic things that come out in this tutorial. And so I hope, I hope rather than show you, you know, I, I've shown where to sharpen and how to sharpen and do noise reduction and all that stuff a um, hundred times. And rather than show you that stuff, I'm hoping today to show you a little bit more about the creative side of things. You know, where do we brighten? Where do we darken? Where do we brush? How much do we brush? How do we add a sky? How do we reduce that sky? How do we pull it off? How do we make some of these things kind of fit together in that final resulting photo? And I think you'll learn a lot of great tips along the way here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna jump over in the original photo into the develop app. Um, first off, uh, from a workflow perspective, I like to get rid of spots. They, you know, no matter what I do to the photo, when there's all these little spots in here, they're, they're a pain in the neck. Um, couple little tricks for you because sometimes they are hard to see. Uh, what I'll usually do if I'm inside of uh, on one develop, I'll crank up the structure and I'll crank down the haze and that'll usually take the spots and make them really, really dark. And then I'll take the, uh, the eraser tool here and, uh, and then just go in and just start to erase them. All right. So grab that one and I could go on and on for days because there are a lot of spots in here. So at some point I'm really just going to have to stop because we're just gonna run out of time, but I'll get rid of a couple more. Uh, there's a couple more up there. I'm gonna skip those. You'll notice a couple of dark ones down here in the water, and I'll get rid of those guys as well, all right? Here's the cool thing is even though we got rid of them in this super contrasty weird mode, uh, if I double click structure and I double, double click haze, I'm back to normal, and, um, and I don't have to worry about the spots anymore. So the spots are gone. Uh, they, they were gone and no matter what version of the photo, those, those two sliders just helped me see it. All right, next up, I think, uh, I think let's add a little bit of structure to that, a little bit of shadows to, uh, to bring out some shadow detail here. I'm not gonna crank it up because even though it's shadows, it tends to, uh, it tends to really hurt the edges of our photos. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, I'll go over here, kind of pull back on the highlights. I want to share with you some some thought processes and and honestly folks these are these are things that I even I learn more about as time goes on but one of those one of those things is I think I I've started to try to I started to try to separate my workflow a little bit started to try to do my basic settings, and then I try to think stylistically after because sometimes you can you can really combine the two worlds. And what happens is is you wind up you know well, well where do I warm my photo and where do I cool it down? Where do I do all these things? So I try to think you know my exposure, shadows, highlights, the, the general settings here. You know blacks and whites. You know I want to make uh, get a little bit of a brighter white point here, a little bit of a black point. But I try to get some of that basic stuff done. It actually happens really quick. But the next part of the phase for me is I'll usually grab the brush tool and I'll try to even out some of those areas that I couldn't do with the sliders. So for example here, like maybe we want to darken the sky a little bit and maybe even add a little bit more blue. So I'll go in here and I'll, I'm going to zoom in on the photo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my perfect brush. All right. The way that I usually do this is I work on the edges first. So I'll go over here and I'm gonna make this a little darker than I'd need to just so that we can see what's going on here. I'd go over here and I'd work on the edges. And if you kind of just keep that little plus icon that's in the middle, if you kind of just keep that from spilling over, uh, you should get a pretty good edge detection here. All right, so that's usually what I'm looking for. All right, and you may have to make your brush a little bit smaller at times and zoom in to get some of those uh, really tiny areas, but for the sake of moving along a little quicker, we'll just go ahead and outline. So once I've outlined, uh, I'll usually back up, I'll go back into the fit view here. Once I've outlined it, then I'll jump in here and, uh, and I'll turn off the perfect brush and I'll just start to paint and do the rest of the sky. I'm not too worried about the section over there, although I might go back in and, uh, and fix it in just a second. All right, so we got that. And right down here. Okay. So now you see here, we can kind of, 
we can kind of control this. It made it a little bit easier for me to paint when I made it darker, but obviously I don't want to make it that dark. Number one, it's going to show up all the, the edges along my uh, my selection here uh, if I dramatically try to change it. And that, that's not even a product of the selection. That's a product of you're, you're trying to put a, a really dark background where there wasn't, and it's going to be hard to pull that off. So I just want to make it a little bit darker and a little bit more blue here. Uh, let's go back here to overall settings. Maybe we'll uh, we'll adjust some of the highlights a bit here. Let's go back to my brush tool and I'm gonna add another layer. This time I'm gonna increase the exposure a bit and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna paint on the rocks here. So I'm gonna outline it. The reason I do that is because that perfect brush, it, it, it takes a little bit longer and it's, <sighs> In, in the way that it selects things, it's, it might not select every tiny little detail. So I want to try to get as little of that as possible. I just want to get my edges, then turn it off, and then just paint in everything else. Um, then that way I know everything's going to get selected in there. All right, so go in there and paint with our brush. Go back here. So that's looking good from an overall standpoint. Uh, I can go in here. I can maybe make it. I don't want to make it that bright. Make it a little bit brighter, a little bit more warmth to it. So at this phase, I would move on to do a couple of stylistic changes to it. So we'll jump over here into effects. And I think the main stylistic changes I want to do are going to be, uh, let's go into, I think we'll go and we've got our adjustments here. I think we will go and add a filter layer. Let's go dynamic contrast. And all I really want to do with dynamic contrast is paint it in on the rocks, maybe a little bit on the foreground here. All right. So I'll play around with the sliders. I'll try to get what I'm looking for. I'm not paying attention to anything else really except for the rocks that I have. So just looking at that small details, I think helps out. If I go with the large, they, they tend to get a little bit to me over exaggerated up there. So I want to be careful and don't forget that edge. The more detail we add to this thing, um, the harder time we're going to have to sell. Uh, that edge that we made a selection from. So I just want to add a little bit of contrast to that. I'm going to go to my masking brush down here and hit the right bracket key to make my brush larger. I'm going to paint it away. Paint it away from everything else in the photo. Especially just the stuff, the, the water in the foreground, mostly what I'm looking for here. I might even see if I can paint it just from some of those edges that stick out up there. Uh, we're going to jump back to develop because I've realized something that I want to do inside of here. We're going to go to our local adjustments and I want to brighten the foreground a little bit. Easiest way for me to do that is uh, just go and add myself a layer here. Click with that graduated filter. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to increase the exposure. All right. So now I can spread that out and I can get it to just kind of go right up to the water, make it a little bit brighter make it a little bit warmer, bring out some of the warmer tones that were there. And what that does is also creates a nice contrast between the warmth and some of the cooler colors that were in the water. And if you want to bring those into there, you can, you can, I mean, it actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, if I bring that, if I kind of bring it up a little bit too. It's tough. You can go on and on with this stuff and, uh, and, and keep playing with it. So you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll do that. I, it wasn't my plan when I practiced it. I didn't, but I'll add a little bit of contrast here. A little bit of detail just to bring out some of the detail in the sand. All right, so that's looking good. A um, little bit less warmth. How's that? Okay, so uh, so what have we done here? We've done our, our basic, you know, exposure correction. Um, we've got the things bright and things dark, and we've got most of that done. So now I want to put a different sky in it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hop over here to layers and... First thing I'm going to do, so when we get over to layers, you'll notice that there's actually uh, one of the preset skies that come pre-installed with on one. We're going to go ahead and grab that one. So if I go up top here to my extras, all right, uh, and then inside of the extras, you will see that there is a, uh, there's a little thing in here called skies. So we'll go into skies. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, I am going to choose number 46. We'll just drag that one out on top of the photo, add it as a layer. Let's go ahead and hide that for now. 
And so la what do we got here? So we got this guy on top of here. I'm gonna back out a little bit. Let's, let's command minus or control minus. I'm gonna select that sky layer and use the move tool. And let's kind of get it up into the general area. I'm gonna expand it out a little bit. I wanna to try to get that sun back to where the sun was kind of poking in back there. But I also like the way there's a lot of, there's a lot of sunlight on both sides of this. So you're gonna see that come into play in just a minute here. So let's go down here let's see if we can bring that in. Hit apply. All right, next thing we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna turn that layer off. Uh, let's go to our regular layer here. We're gonna go to the quick mask tool and I'm just gonna paint into the sky. And you'll see that's gonna do a pretty good job of getting rid of it. Maybe we'll paint again over there. Uh, we have a mask. So the only thing that's different is our mask is actually on this layer. And what I really wanna do is I wanna get it over to this layer. So let's go mask, copy, go over to this layer, turn it back on and uh, mask, paste. And now the mask is doing the opposite of what we want. If you look at the photo here, the mask is, <laughs> our, our clouds are in, the, in the, the rock formation here. So let's just go to invert that mask. And what that does is that flips it. So you can see now we have it outside of there. All right, we can actually go back down here to our regular layer and uh, we can just go to mask and reset that one because we don't even need it on the bottom. All right, so Commander Control Plus to zoom in and we are not perfect on our selection here. So we're gonna zoom in on this and uh, go grab our masking brush. I usually use a larger feather setting here. Go ahead and then turn on the perfect brush uh, with the perfect brush. And then don't forget, we wanna go ahead and click on the layer that's got the mask on it. Uh, the mask is in minus mode, so if I paint, I'm gonna be taking away the sky. So what I wanna do is make sure I hold down my option or alt key, which says add back, right, plus and add that back in. You'll also see a lot of times I'll reduce the opacity setting of this and I'll build it back up. So rather than do it at 100% opacity, um, I'll kind of paint over a few times and build that up as I go along. And it's actually a great tip. You know, we could go along, um, you know, you could probably take some time and go along and outline this whole thing uh, and, and kind of get rid of a little bit of that halo. We're also seeing that halo because we've got way too big of a change here. You, you would never place this dark of a background where there wasn't, you're, you're never gonna pull it off. So of course we wanna come in here, we wanna reduce the opacity. Um, that'll help us bring, you know, bring some of that back in, okay? So we don't want as, as, as big of a change there because it wasn't that dark back there. Look, it's, it's almost white up here because the sun was back there. So we're never gonna be able to, to pull that off. So we are gonna reduce the opacity, bring in a little bit of the original sky that was below it. But here's a great little tip to help us bring all this together. And this is why I saved it for last because I kinda knew that I was gonna replace the sky. So let's do a couple things before we get there. Uh, first off, I'm gonna go in here and crop just a little bit, just maybe take a little bit off of the bottom here. Could have done it back in develop, you know, at some point, you know, get your cropping done. It's actually probably a little bit better to workflow wise to get it done and develop. Um, and then we're gonna come up here to layer and we're gonna create a new stamped layer. So that gives us one new layer at the top. And then when I jump to effects, here's what's gonna tie it all together, all right? I'm gonna come over here on the left-hand side, take a look at the presets. I'm gonna go into the landscape preset section and I think, you know, essentially you don't have to choose the one that I'm choosing here, but any one of these presets that adds some coloring to the photo is going to help tie this all together, like golden hour sunshine um, or even golden hour enhancer here. Anything that adds a little bit of color to the photo will help us bring this all together and, and really in a way sell it a little bit more than we had before. So I think that one actually looks really good. If I were to finish things up, I might hop over into, let's say develop. And why not? We haven't added a vignette yet. That's always a nice way to close things up with a little bit of the big softy and darken some of those edges there. Okay, so let's go ahead here. We're gonna click undone. I'm gonna get us back over into browse. We wanna take a look at our before and after. So here we are, this is our before photo. This is what we started with. And that is our after photo. This other one, I can, you can see, I even took a little bit stronger. I think I actually went in and painted a little bit of a, a little bit of glow over here. In fact, we could do it really quick. 
Uh, I just went into the develop module here and took the brush tool, made the exposure a little bit brighter, made the brush really large, made uh, add a little bit of temperature here and just kind of brushed in on the left and the right hand side. Not too bright. Definitely a little bit of warmer. Get a little bit of color wash as that sky kind of faded into the uh, into the background there. So lots of little things we can do to uh, to tweak this and finish it up, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you again real soon.